So I, uh, I kind of want to touch on a couple things. And, um, I've been doing a lot of listening, um, not just here, but for the past, I don't know, five, six, seven years. Um, I heard someone mention allyship earlier. Um, and I think there's a really crucial thing that gets missed in allyship. Um, and that's applying uh, your perspective to things that have nothing to do with your perspective. Um, and it's frustrating because I hear for the past uh, 10 days, I've been hearing even really close friends of mine talk about how oh, oh, protesting this is horrible, it's stupid. This riot is horrible, it's stupid. And I look at all those people who are saying that, and at some point in their history, they benefit from a protest and a riot. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah. when, I have, when I have friends of mine who are, I have friends of mine who are gay that decide that they're going to not acknowledge Stonewall and the White Knight riots. All right, all right. When I have people who really like their 40-hour work week and they're not going to acknowledge like yeah. the Haymarket massacre. <laughs> Everybody really, really likes remembering Martin Luther King. Nobody really likes remembering Malcolm X and, and all the people who don't have names that they don't remember and that weren't famous enough uh, to quote unquote make an impact, which is frustrating for me because my grandparents marched for Martin Luther King and nobody will remember them except for me and that's really important to me um, because I think that my grandparents were wonderful people um, and they're the reason why I look at things the way I do. And I think it's really important that when we start talking about the big names like Michael Ferguson and uh, Tamir Rice and uh, John T. Williams in Seattle and all these other people that remember all the, that we remember all the people that died before them and are going to die after them um, in the race, and that's not even a race, in the walk towards something more equitable, something better. Um, it's nice that we have these names, but I, I, I hope that those of us who do not live in those uh, in those neighborhoods, those who have never had that perspective, that don't have to worry about looking over their back when they walk home at night, that they don't have to worry about getting fired by showing up here today, even though I know I'm wearing a mask. Um, I, I hope that we don't lose sight that it's not just about Michael, Mike, uh, Michael Brown. It's not just about um, Tammy Rice. It's not just about John T. Williams. It's not just about all these people. It's about the whole thing. It's about the fact that we have a system that is inherently serves people like me. As a, and when I hear like when I hear Black Lives Matter get answered by All Lives Matter, I think of Animal Farm, where I hear All Lives Matter, but these lives matter more. Right? <laughs> right. That's right. So when I hear, and I really want people to, like because that's and that's a perspective thing. When I hear All Lives Matter, I'm like, uh, yes, All Lives Matter, but some lives matter more in the system that we have right now. When I hear people talk about racism, which is a really hard thing to talk about, is it because it makes people uncomfortable, and it really should. I hear people say, I'm colorblind. And I will admit that in high school, in my freshman, sophomore year in college, I would say that I'm colorblind. Except by saying that you're colorblind, you're also blind to all the struggles that people have had historically and all the struggles that people have now. It's like, you have to acknowledge where people are coming from. We have to acknowledge all the things that actually make us different because that difference is all the difference in the world. For the people that are standing up there, I used to be in their shoes. I used to sit there and say uh, the infantryman's creed. Uh, I, I was enlisted at one point in my life. And I understand that, sort of, to a, a point. Um, when I came out, I kind of looked at everything and went, wow, that was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Um, because it's not about protecting your community. It's not about protecting the nation. Um, to think that someone across multiple oceans and mountains and all that really gives a shit about your freedom here in the United States, is, I think that's an exercise in insanity. Um, but I think that my grandfather was an officer. My best friend's an officer. And I know that myself, I didn't really sign up for certain things. Um, I liked the idea of upholding and defending the Constitution. I liked the idea of upholding the, and it's one of the reasons why I, I show up to protest with my handy dandy toolkit. Um, is because I want to support everybody here. Um, and that goes back to what I'm saying about allyship. Is that being an ally is about supporting people. It's about standing next to the person that you're supposed to be supporting, standing behind them, and never in front of them or speaking over them. So I'm hoping that everyone learns something from all the voices that they heard here tonight, and we'll pass that on to the person next to them, even the people that don't agree. 
like when I see people blocking everybody on Facebook, it doesn't help anybody. Like blocking everybody else to have a conversation <laughs> is hard that you should be having and you should feel uncomfortable in. Is when you, when you stop having that conversation, you lose. The, uh, no one wins. Uh, nobody moves forward. And that person's just going to be the same person they were a moment ago, just one less friend.